welcome back to yet another episode of our series Power People which profiles the hustles of the music business industry and today on this very special episode we have with us Mansoor Rahimat Khan, founder and CEO of Beat Oven AI. We welcome you here today Mansoor. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be part of this episode. Yeah. So Mansoor sir, can you share the inspiration behind the creation of Beat Oven AI and what motivated you to start this venture? Yeah, so basically, um, a little bit about my background. I'm a musician. I come from a family of sitar players. We are a seventh generation of Gharana. And uh, I'm personally trained in music by my dad. I've been playing for the last 20 years. Um, and uh, in, I've like, played 200 plus concerts globally. I've released music on various streaming platforms and millions of streams on my music. But I've also been in the technology space. So I have... Uh, then my undergrad from NIT in uh, electric, electronics and communication engineering. And then I went for my master's in music technology at Georgia Tech in Atlanta in the US. Oh, wow. um, and I've worked across several startups, uh, primarily in tech and product tools, uh, and uh, uh, primarily focused towards audio. So mm -hmm. I've always been combining my music and technology skills throughout my career. Mm -hmm. And also my co-founder, the, the business partner who I started this company with, uh, he has a similar background, who's also got a master's in sound and music computing from Europe also a bachelor's in information technology. So yeah. both of us like combined our skills and we found this very uh, interesting problem, you know, in the market, which was the production music library uh, yeah. requirement for content creators. So basically people who are making games, videos, podcasts, they require background music. And the way how it was being solved today was, was by using stock music libraries. Mm -hmm. And we saw an opportunity to build a solution where these content creators could compose their own soundtracks mm -hmm. by giving very simple prompts. Uh, and this is something that we thought about back in 2021, very mm -hmm. early. Uh, now it's a very common thing of generative AI. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the original thesis was on that basis that, okay, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's a need for a tool that allows yeah. people to compose their own music in a very simplified manner. So that's the idea behind and genesis behind Beethoven. Yeah. Okay. So what, uh, so, uh, what types of users or musicians do you envision? I mean, benefiting the most from Beethoven. What type uh, you guys, you know, look after? So we have been around now for almost three years as a company. Yeah. So uh, our product has been live. Uh, we have close to a million users who are using our product. Mm -hmm. um, now, mostly the biggest category that we see today is independent filmmakers, people who yeah. make like short films, uh, you know, mm -hmm. documentaries, docu-series mm -hmm. uh, on YouTube, uh, you know. So these are the most uh, common users that we see on a product. The second category is people who make like, you know, podcasts and games uh, who require like intro music, background music while the game is being played. Right. And then there's a small subset of users who also use this for creating uh, lo-fi playlists, you know, on uh, so for calm, ambient listening on YouTube. So yeah, YouTube is our biggest use case is what I would say. Uh, you know, people who create content on YouTube who require royalty-free music, uh, they are the ones who primarily use our product as a hmm. Yeah. So on that royalty, royalty free, I would like you like you to ask regarding that. that could you elaborate on how Beat Open AI AI's platform provides content creators with royalty free, affordable, and original music? And how does the AI technology facilitate facilitates the this process? I mean, yeah. So um, just to break down on how Beethoven works, right? Like, so yeah. we have. Uh, we have one side of the business, which is the supply. So the supply is basically, we work with a wide pool of artists, uh, musicians, producers. Uh, so these would be like your music producers, session musicians, you know, studio recording artists. And what we do is we uh, do agreements with them and we also pay them and we do full uh, licensed acquisition of data from them. So, uh, so basically what that does is there's a transfer of copyright that happens between the artist and Beethoven and hence we own all of that data that's a step one. Okay. Then the step two is we take only that data and we train models uh, that are able to compose newer forms of music using those data sets as the building blocks. So, uh, so, so that's the second part. So that we build models for music composition, models for mixing, mastering, for uh, you know, like for production, all of the different aspects of music, uh, music creation, right? So all of that is taken care of by the AI. So those yeah. are completely built in house, and then. That is served, that technology is served on our interface, which is uh, Beethoven.ai, where the users can just come, come and sign in on a web application and start using it. 
and they can give prompts and they can generate royalty free music so that's basically the whole end to end how it functions as of today okay yeah. okay okay so uh, recently mansoor sir uh, we um, a funding round raised inr 11 crores with participation from several prominent investors how do you plan to you know strategy uh, uh, to allocate this funding to fuel uh, beethoven's ai i mean growth or cro- across different aspects of the business so uh, one of the biggest challenges that we have discovered while building beethoven is uh, the expectation from the product is very high in the sense uh, a lot of our users are global users we are not although we are an indian company building out of india but uh, 96% of our revenues come from outside india oh. so so like then then the expectation of the product quality the music quality music mm-hmm. all of those aspects are like very very high so we need to serve that need and the main purpose of raising this round was we want to invest a lot into the direction of product development so uh, we are hiring a couple of phd folks uh, phds in ai music from europe uh, who have already joined our team so these guys are going to be working on the research side of things so how can we improve the music quality the music composition side of things then we are also going to be investing on in our artist partnership so right now we have worked with close to 200 artists now we are going to expand it to 500 artists in the next two years mm-hmm. so more artists uh, so more data set so more more uh, content uh, for so on which we can train our models on so these are the two main aspects and a small percentage we will also be experimenting on how we can distribute this product to more users right like in the marketing more not really marketing but marketing experiments you know just to figuring out a go to market strategy so that's basically how yeah we are planning to invest this much yeah. so as far uh, you know your journey has uh, is concerned so as an entrepreneur what are some of the key or greatest challenges you have faced while building and scaling beethoven ai and how have you overcome them so i think one of the biggest challenges being an entrepreneur is you are looking at things which the market is not really ready for right like you are already like kind of thinking about something you're into the future uh, and you and you don't know whether this is going to work or not you know yeah. like so you just have to keep telling yourself every day that okay like you know we need to wake up and you need to keep doing this you just need to keep building it in one direction and i think consistency is like super important so uh for me what has really helped is discipline like you know like i i have a routine uh, which i follow like i wake up in the morning i do my workout exercise and then i come back i, I get to work and uh, and then that routine what i figured out is that there's a pattern that emerges you know like i keep doing that every day every day little 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 bit of progress and that just helps me like you know to consistently keep building little small small aspects of the business over a period of time and that same thing also needs to be reflected in my team and like I, and yeah. one of the most important things what i believe is hiring so uh, you need to hire the right kind of people uh, people who are intrinsically motivated that you don't that you don't need to manage you know like people who will do things by themselves and uh, fortunately at beethoven we have an stellar team like all of the folks that are working are like people who are intrinsically motivated and very talented people so these are very important aspects because uh, i believe it's a people's business ultimately you know the people yeah. are behind the product are the ones who actually drive the innovation so it's very important for the people to be motivated and be yeah. really believe in what we are building in the long run so the second part i would say is uh, uh, you know raising venture investments and yeah. funding especially in this kind of a market which is very yeah. challenging last couple of years which you would have observed uh, and not just about that also in the creative industries right like india uh, like most of the creative things come usually from the us you know like you will see like creative applications but now slowly in india we are starting to see some of that happening mm-hmm. so it's a new market so you need a lot of convincing to do you need to tell mm-hmm. people like okay you know these are also markets that exist there's, there's a lot of potential for this mm-hmm. so yeah i i believe that uh, that is a challenge that we have to face as the first generation entrepreneurs working in this direction but yeah i think we 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 really enjoy doing it like so that's basically yeah. how it occurred yeah so as you mentioned that you were a musician uh, first and then you uh, you know you studied music tech music tech and you you wanted to you know build this company but uh, what made you uh, you know what made you think about this decision that i will not pursue you know singing or you know in the music industry and in the in the music business you wanted to do this so, so how come right. this shift came right that's a great question so uh, like my family has been very active in music so i currently have 15 musicians in my family who are very big artists performing globally right now uh, but what i saw uh, is 
music is a very very challenging industry you know like there are a lot of problems and through the whole process of seeing my father seeing seeing my own journey as an artist i saw there are so many problems that exist in the music industry and i was very motivated to solve some of those problems so basically uh, even before i was building beethoven i didn't know that i was going to be building beethoven my perspective was i want to build a startup in the music industry so anything that has the potential to drive more value more revenues into the music industry is something that i wanted to work towards mm. so uh, so case in point um, i mean although beethoven is sounds like an ai that might replace musicians uh, that is something that people would look at it but uh, but uh, the way how we look at the business and the the way how we have built it is we are actually trying to build a business model where more revenues can come inside of the music industry so you know so ai is just like one new avenue of mm. revenue generation for the music industry so my perspective was like i want to build a business that will create more value for the music industry and solve a little bit of the problems in the music industry yeah mm. so uh, so how do you ensure that the music generated by beat oven maintains a high level of creativity and originality right so there are two parts to it one is we have models which are continuously learning and uh, from user patterns user behaviors and also from the data that we accumulate uh, so we keep improving those systems to make them more and more creative over a period of time so that is one way of doing it so the second is so the, and that is also very feedback driven like we we listen to users customers they keep telling us hey you know what this is sounding very loopy this is sounding too monotonous can this be more dynamic so all of that feedback we take into account and then we drive the research in that direction that is one way of doing it the second is we also give the user a lot of creativity so it's not just about us generating music and giving them but we also give them tools to edit their soundtrack so they can uh, like you know customize they can move things around they can like how you paint right like uh, on a on a canvas and then you have the flexibility to like paint whatever you have in your mind on a canvas right so similarly on beethoven we are trying to replicate that in the audio domain so when you're creating a music track can you move things around and you know like just plug and play and mm-hmm. uh, and the music track takes a new shape rather than you wanting to know a lot about music like our users don't know about music a lot like they are mm-hmm. they are non musicians so how do you build a tool that helps non musicians to compose music in a way that they understand mm-hmm. so that's basically how we give that creative freedom to them as well yeah yeah definitely so uh, as you know ai is growing and uh, in this time and it, it is it is generally a new market to explore so how do you see the role of ai evolving in the music industry in the coming years for music business and where does beat oven ai fit into this evolution so right now it's very early to comment uh, because a uh, lot of exploration is happening like not even the traditional players like the labels and all, mm-hmm. all of the big big guys have also not really hardcore ventured into this technology yet you know mm-hmm. they're still very exploring they're seeing like okay what can we do with this technology yeah. uh, but there are some some patterns that are definitely emerging so one is around creation like you know uh, when you're creating music as a artist uh, the tools that can assist you to better create music in a faster and a more efficient manner mm-hmm. uh, then second would be search related problems like let's say there is a sound that you are looking for that you have in your mind and can instead of searching through sounds can you generate that sound right like so those are some other opportunities uh, and uh, beethoven would fit in the second category actually so we are actually trying to solve the search problem so mm-hmm. all our users already know like okay this is the kind of music i want uh, it should sound like this this is how it should be can i just give a prompt or can i just give some input mm-hmm. and get that output file directly from beethoven rather than going on a library and searching mm-hmm. through hundreds and thousands of tracks and listening to each one of them right so the mm-hmm. search problem is basically where we would fit in okay that's okay yeah okay so given your expertise i, I mean in deep learning and audio applications what are these what are some of the emerging trends or you know advan- advancements in technology that excite you the most and how might might they influence in the future of music tech so um so for the way i will i look at it like there are a lot of new models that have come recently right like like yeah. diffusion models then uh, transformers large language models uh, a lot of that work initially was happening in text and images like you would have seen products like chat gpt mid journey which caught a lot of attention but that didn't impact much in the music market because mm-hmm. of a lot of restrictions around copyrights lots of data restrictions and all of those things uh but i i believe that uh, now the technology is already kind of there to even disrupt the music industry but my perspective is 
the disruption has to happen in the right manner it's not just about technology and deep learning it has to be in a manner that is also inclusive of artists uh, yeah. it is it shouldn't be like okay like you know you've built an ai that is taking away all the revenues and shares of the artists rather it should be like can it generate new revenues for the artists so yeah. so building business models like that is very important so it's going to be more about business models and less about tech because tech is definitely going to get good and yeah. we are already kind of there and probably by next one year or two years you will not be able to differentiate between what is ai generated music and human generated music you know Imagine. it is going, it is going to be that good but uh, but then what do we do with that technology do we want to use that technology and put it to use directly and then just replace the artist i don't think that's the answer right because mm-hmm. if you look at how these models are trained are uh, they are being trained on artists data so yeah. the the so, so the supplier of the data is the artist so make sure that you compensate the artist rightfully so that's basically is the most important part uh, for a sensible future and a more inclusive inclusive future which combines artists and creativity and technology together yeah so on, on that only enhancing you know user experience seems to be a key focus i feel for beethoven yes. so could you detail some of the improvements uh, you know users can expect particularly in terms of music accuracy quality and the design of you mm-hmm. know editing features what so- we can expect yeah so if you see historically how we have evolved our user experiences like first we used to be a selection tool so people used to select okay i want a one minute track in 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 a cinematic genre happy mood uh a two minute duration so there used to be directly these buttons that you could select and you could put inputs and you could enter it then we evolved that to a more text to music chat gpt style kind of interface where you can just ta- type anything you have in your mind you can also give us like big big paragraphs and then we'll understand what you're trying to say. And then we will generate music, which is closely aligned to that input. But what we have realized is that now the next phase is something called as multimodal. So we are going in that direction. What multimodal means is you don't, you are not limited by what you can give as an input. You can give either text, you can give us a video, you can give us a song, you can give us like any sort of input that you feel is relevant for us to understand what you want to tell the system. And on the basis of that, we will generate a soundtrack and give it to you. Mm. So that will significantly improve the music accuracy. So basically, people will get the output which is closely aligned to what they are looking for. Mm. And it will. Uh, and, and the second part is music quality. So we are investing in more partnerships with artists and also in research, yeah. so that the quality of music is very high. You know, so that it sounds like music that we listen uh, to and not just like some computer generated robotic music. Yeah. So what are the key collaborations and partnerships we can look for, as you mentioned? So we are That's already right. like uh, so like doing independent. So we are not like partnering with uh, any big companies, but rather okay. what we're doing is we are partnering with smaller independent artists. Okay. So a lot of these music producers uh, from different, different networks. So initially it used to be from our network, but now we are also exploring international markets. So we are working okay. with artists in Europe. We are working with artists in the US. So we have already started doing that. Uh, so these are the kind of partnerships. So it's independent artist partnership. So our vision is we want to create a new ecosystem for independent artists. So uh, so in the long run, when Beethoven does become a big company, there will be a lot of the revenues that will be passed on to the independent artists that are becoming a part of the Beethoven ecosystem. So that's the way how we are going about it. Mm. So yeah. what is the, you, as you mentioned, the revenue. So how how the revenue is generated through this? So we generate revenues using subscriptions. So basically okay. uh, we have uh, two models actually. So one is subscription and one is uh, pay-per use. So let's say you're a user uh, who's creating uh, maybe let's say a podcast. Hmm. So you will not require recurring music, right? You will just require once intro music for that podcast episode. So you for you, pay-per use is a better model. You can just come and you can download one track and you can pay, pay like $3, $6, depending on how much. So we, we charge on duration. So per minute uh, or, or per second is how we basically charge you. So it's a usage-based pricing model. Mm. And subscription is more suited for somebody like a YouTube creator who's creating three, four videos a month, mm-hmm. who has a recurring need of creating more and more content. So they could just take a subscription plan and they can start using the product. So we only charge the user for downloading. We don't charge for using the tool. For using the tool is free of charge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's great. That's great. So finally, looking ahead, what are your you know long-term aspirations for Beethoven? And how do you envision the company's impact on the music industry and business globally? So our vision, uh, the next three to four years is we want to build the best tool in the world for music and sound effects generation. So anybody who's creating content and requires original music and sound effects, 
and wants to be able to flexibility and also customizability, they should be able to do it on Beethoven in a very simplified manner. So that's the product vision that we have. The broader vision of how it will impact the music industry is we want to build an AI tool that is inclusive of the music industry. So yeah. all artists on one side, that is on supply. So the, any artist who wants to work should be able to freely come and supply their data to Beethoven. And on the basis of how their data is being used in our models and how it is generating revenues, a certain percentage of that we want to give it back to the artist community. So that's the broader business vision that we have. And that is how it will significantly impact the music industry globally. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mansu, for your time. It was our pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you.